I want to put the spotlight on the ficus benjamina. G'day plant lovers, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kathy. For my return visitors, thank you so much. I really do appreciate absolutely every single one of you for coming back. Thank you. Today I wanted to talk about the ficus benjamina. I recently decided that I wanted to put the spotlight on certain of my plants that I don't often see on the internet, say on YouTube or even on Instagram or anywhere like that. Not because they're hard to find, but simply that they just don't seem to get enough love. So I've already done one video in this series. I put the spotlight on my Homolamina Wallisii camouflage. So this is, I guess, number two in this series. I know that Christian from the Crazy Plant Guy in Canada, he has definitely got one. And I love seeing it because it's just not something that I see pretty much on any other channel. Now, if you ask me, I think this plant is beautiful. But I have to be honest, I think most of my plants, if not all of them, are beautiful. Except for Mr. Ugly. That's my black cardinal philodendron. He's the only one that I don't think is really beautiful. But I like him despite that. But tell me this isn't gorgeous, don't you think? Now I can't say that it really is the easiest plant that I own, but I don't think it is a difficult plant. I wouldn't even put it in the medium category. I think that it is definitely a plant that beginners could own and grow quite successfully. I have done quite a bit of reading as to the care requirements for this plant and I don't agree completely with all of them. So I'm going to go through what I have found has worked for me. And let me just preface that by saying that I have owned this one for over a year. In fact, I grew this from two cuttings with three leaves. The mother plant I believe I purchased in April last year and it did very well until I caught the flu. And then I think I just didn't pay attention to some of my plants and unfortunately the mother plant of this was attacked by pests. So I took a couple of cuttings and I have been growing this now for almost a year. It probably is close to a year actually. It is almost as big as the mother plant which unfortunately has gone to plant heaven. But at least I've been able to save a part of it. Ficus benjamina is part of the genus Ficus which includes things like the Ficus elastica and the Ficus lyrata, the fiddle leaf fig. They are part of the fig family. It is a flowering plant and it also can create fruit. I think figs. The ficus benjamina is also known as the weeping fig because it has a droopy habit where the leaves actually hang down towards the ground. The species was first identified by Carl Linnaeus and I'll put his name on the screen. The Younger, a Swedish naturalist back in, I think it was 1767. It is native to Asia and Australia, which is interesting, I never knew that. But it has also become naturalized in, I think, the West Indies, as well as in the USA. Also, Ficus benjamina is the official tree of Bangkok, Thailand. Now this particular plant is a cultivar. This one is called Midnight Beauty. But there are also many other cultivars, including variegated versions of the ficus benjamina. There goes a leaf. <laughs> oh, that's just one, so I'm not too worried. Now, ficus benjaminas do grow into trees, so be aware of that. It will grow and it will grow big, but definitely outdoors it will grow a lot bigger. I think they grow up to 30 meters tall, and it has such a branching habit that it can be as wide as 100 meters, which I thought was amazing. They're quite majestic looking actually, but their roots can be invasive. So you have to very carefully plan where you're going to plant a ficus benjamina because it can upturn concrete and cause damage to sewers, etc. Obviously, they will not grow to that kind of height indoors, 
but if you have it long enough indoors it will outgrow your house and you will need to prune it back if you want to keep it indoors the leaves are very glossy probably needs a bit of a clean Nicole might disapprove that I haven't actually cleaned my leaves I'll be honest I haven't but regardless they apparently do flower I don't know if they flower indoors I don't expect it to flower indoors but you never know and when they start growing the trunks are actually lighter brown and apparently as they get older they fade to a grayish color these are quite sturdy I can actually pick the plant up through that which I don't recommend that you do but I have done it it is definitely not a fragile plant even though it does look like one in my experience ficus benjamina just like the ficus elastica prefers bright light you can have them in a little bit less intense light like medium light levels but they are definitely happier with the brightest light that we can give them in fact when this was still pretty young last spring and summer I actually had it on my north facing windowsill because we're in Australia north facing light is the strongest light we can get and our summer sun can be really relentless and very hot and this plant didn't care it absolutely loved it and it grew fantastically for me in fact I think I repotted it twice last year between spring and autumn because it just grew so fast <laughs> so be aware they grow fast and the more light you give them the faster they will grow I currently have it about a meter back from my window it's just too big for the windowsill at the moment and it's still growing and it grew for me throughout winter now I have read and I think I've even seen videos where people say keep the soil moist I disagree with that completely she actually just like the ficus elasticus likes to dry out so I wait until my moisture meter reads at least three before I water her. Anything below three, she can take a water. And in summer, you will definitely need to water her more often. I don't know what size pot this is. I think this might be a 12 centimeters pot, but I find that even in winter, I need to water her anywhere between 10 days and 14 days. And she is, as you can see, still growing can tell the newer leaves because they're all a lighter shade than the other ones as I would recommend to anyone don't just water your plants on a schedule check that she needs water before you give her any oh, she's so <laughs> sorry I do often get distracted I have read that they require relatively high humidity I don't agree with that I find that she copes with the regular humidity we have in our homes we are currently just coming out of winter in Melbourne and I have had the heater going pretty much all winter and according to my hygrometer on average the humidity in my kitchen is between say 38 upwards up to say 50 and she has coped quite well in that kind of humidity levels I don't think you need a humidifier to have a ficus benjamina in your home however like any plant they definitely would prefer more humidity you do need to fertilize your plants when they're growing I don't like to fertilize in winter and I did not fertilize any of my plants in winter but I will now fertilize her because it is finally spring in Melbourne and I just use a slow release fertilizer osmocot I think for indoor plants I also did give her Charlie's carp fish liquid fertilizer last year I dilute it quite heavily because she already has some slow release fertilizer but I would give her that every couple of weeks when I watered her but I definitely spray all my plants with sea salt which I think is why they just grow like crazy for me they just love that stuff and I think that's why she's doing so well now for potting I generally use Osmocot premium potting mix and it is only recently that I've started to add perlite to make it a bit more fast draining 
But regardless, she did fine just in the regular Osmocot Premium Potting Mix. And she grew a ton. <laughs> Propagation. She is very, very easy to propagate. I was really new to plants last year and I was really stressed that I was losing the mother plant because I just loved it. So I just took a couple of cuttings. I really didn't know what the hell I was doing. I stuck them in water. They grew roots very, very quickly. And then I potted them up. So if you were to take a cutting, basically you can take something like here in between the nodes where the leaves are growing and then just stick that in water and they will grow. Now for pruning, you can prune her, of course, in anywhere you prune, she will branch out, but she also branches out on her own. However, be aware that ficuses do secrete latex and it can be a skin irritant. And I did recently read, and I don't know how accurate this is, that apparently she can cause allergens. Problems. Let's talk about problems. Okay. Ficus benjamina is notorious for dropping her leaves if the conditions aren't optimal and I actually have experienced this not with her not with this plant but with the mother plant now, I have seen a lot of comments on videos or even on articles or care guides with ficuses that they do not like to be moved I actually haven't found that in my home the only time I had a problem with a ficus and I'm including the elasticas, is when my Benjamina was attacked by pests and I treated it and I then moved her to kind of isolate her from the other plants and she just continued to drop all her leaves. If you see your Benjamina dropping leaves, investigate immediately. It usually means there is a problem. But I have moved this plant from the windowsill to the kitchen to my dining table and she did not drop a single leaf. So I think if they are healthy and happy, they may not like being moved. So you might find that they will drop some leaves, but I don't think that they are as finicky as some people have found. Well, I certainly haven't found her to be that finicky. I have another plant which you could not look at without her dropping leaves. China doll, but ah. Uh. And like some plants, when they are under stress, they will drop some leaves. And that is to conserve energy so that they're not trying to support every single leaf that they have because they have quite a few leaves, as you can see. And as I caught on film, which was not intentional, she did drop this particular leaf, but I just take that as an example of an old leaf that is ready to die. As for pests, as I've said, I have had a pest on her, which was last year. And unfortunately, I really don't know what pest I had because I was just too new to plants, but she might have also been under stress for other reasons. I think I actually got the mother plant in May, which was heading towards winter and she might not have acclimated as well as I thought to my home. So like any plants, of course they can be attacked by pests, but I don't think that they are more susceptible than perhaps other plants like, for example, microton. I think it just blinks and it gets a pest. Or calatheas or some calatheas or alocasias, which are known for spider mites. But the major problem that you would have with the Benjamina is that she will drop her leaves. And as I said, if you see that, investigate immediately because that is her way of telling you that there's something not right with her. And as you can see, for the number of leaves that she has, there is not one leaf that is flawed. They're all pretty much perfect. They're not yellowing. She's very healthy and very happy, which makes me very happy. But I definitely think this is a beautiful and underrated plant. And I like that she is slightly different to, say, the Ficus elastica, which has bigger leaves, or some of the philodendrons, which have huge leaves. I like that she has these lovely, delicate-looking leaves. And they're nice and glossy and green. I just think she's a beautiful plant. I think that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this spotlight on my Ficus Benjamina Midnight Beauty. If 
you have any comments or questions you can leave them down in the comments below or you can contact me on Instagram if you like this video you can give it a thumbs up if you haven't already you can subscribe to my channel again thank you very very much for watching until next time take care guys bye Thank you.